Welcome, Kingdom Kids, to Sunday worship. Welcome uh, to LM123. If this is your first time joining us or your hundredth time joining us, we welcome you. And so we are going to go in uh, shortly to a time of praise. But before we do, I always ask something, which is, Kingdom Kids, are you guys ready to worship? And so when I ask this question, I'm asking, have you gotten a drink of water? Have you gone to the restroom? And have you your Bible with you and a pen or paper or something to write with? And most importantly, I wanted to ask, have you put away all distractions? And are you able to focus on God right now? And so I want you to do a heart check and and see, is your heart ready to worship God? And so if it is, I want us to all stand up from where we're at right now in our seats. So let's stand up and then let's go into a time of prayer and I will pray for us. And I want us to do something, which is put our hands on our hearts and just have this time to pray and to yourself, just ask God, would you open up my heart to really worship you, to really praise you and to really uh, just Focus on you. So put your hand on your heart and I will open us up in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this beautiful Sunday, God, that you have given us. God, I thank you, Lord, for each and every kingdom kid that you have brought here, Lord, to worship you. I pray, Lord, that as we have placed our hands on our hearts, Lord, that you would open up our hearts to you, that you would open up our minds to you, Lord, that we would be able to worship you, God, and to praise you, Lord, with all of our hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would guide over this time of praise, and we thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Trust Him. 
All right, Kingdom Kids, did you have a great time of praising God? I hope you did. And so now we're going to go into the Apostles' Creed together. And what is the Apostles' Creed for our first graders? The Apostles' Creed, it is like a statement of faith. It's saying what we believe about who God is and who Jesus is. And so I want us all to say together on the count of three, uh, the Apostles' Creed. So one, two, three. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Kingdom Kids, welcome. It is announcement time, and so I just wanted to welcome all of you guys for joining us, and especially to our first graders. Welcome to your first LM123 service. Yay, yay. Uh, and so our first announcement is uh, we have something called Bible Buddies. And Bible Buddy is basically like a Bible companion, something that you do every day so that you can draw closer to knowing God. And so your parents, they just need to go on this website here, www.srcc.tv slash resources, and just uh, pick on the file and print it out. And then you can do the Bible Buddy every day uh, for the month. And so our next announcement is that we have a large group Zoom meetings today. And so with who? With me, Pastor Grace. Yay. And so for 11 a.m., all of the girls, you can join me. And at 12 p.m., all of the boys can join me for Zoom large group. Because right now we're on summer break for small groups. And so uh, it, we do have small groups available, small group materials available uh, for you to do with your family if you would like to. And so you just need to go on the website and print out uh, these files and you can do small group time and uh, discussion time with your family. And so our new small groups then, they're going to start on Sunday, September 13th. When? Sunday, September 13th. And so please keep that in mind. That's when you will meet other Kingdom kids and have new teachers as well. Our next announcement is that we have a compassion offering. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically a special offering that we give to our friend. And her name is Esther Akello, and she lives in Uganda. And so I have a picture of our map, right, of the world and we live somewhere here in California, if you see that little red dot. And our friend Esther Kello, she lives all the way over here. So from California all the way over to here in Uganda, in uh, the country of Uganda, that's where she lives. And when we give this special offering of uh, just a dollar each and we support and we make up $38, we can help fund and support our friend in, uh, Esther to eat and to learn more about God and just have the basic livings uh, to help her life. And so if you have a heart to do that, please tell your parents and have your parents contact me, message me and say, oh my, you know, I want to donate for our friend Esther in Uganda. And so Next, uh, the next thing we're going to go over is our life app, which is a life application word. So basically, every month we learn a new word, kind of like a big word, right? And so this month we are learning the word knowledge. Can we say that together? Knowledge. And what does knowledge mean? Knowledge means knowing or having understanding of someone or something. Right, and as your pastor, sorry, I don't think I introduced myself. I'm Pastor Grace. Uh, so basically, knowledge, right? As your pastor, I want you to grow in the knowledge of the Lord, to know and understand who God is, who Jesus is, right? Why He has come, and so that is my prayer for you guys. 
And I know, Kingdom Kids, you guys do monthly memory verses. And so for you first graders too, you are probably familiar with this Bible verse. But every month, we learn a new memory verse. And so for this month, we are learning Psalm chapter 40, verses 5. And so let's read it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you planned for us, none can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Amen. And so, Keenan Kids, I hope you are able to keep this memory verse in mind. And so, the next thing that I want us to go over, it is called the big picture question. Can you say that with me? The big picture question. And so, every month I ask Uh, One big picture question, and that is, why did Jesus perform miracles? So, Keenum Kids, can you think, hmm, why did Jesus perform miracles? Can you think of reasons why? Well, I'll tell you. The reason is because Jesus, he performed miracles to glorify God and to show that Jesus, he is the son of God and that he cares for his people. This is why Jesus performed miracles. So I'm going to ask you this question next week as well. So I hope you're able to remember that. And so now we are going to go into uh, offering time. And so if you have offering, I want you to take it out and uh, keep it and then later give it to your parents and so that your parents can give it for online offering. And so we're now going to go into singing uh, the offering song, which is I Will Worship You. And so we're going to sing the song in English and in Korean. And uh, for those who don't know how to read or sing in Korean, it's okay. You can just sing the English part as well. So let's go into our offering song together. Let's sing Perfect You Are. Perfect you are, my God, righteous and holy in all of your ways, revealing your glory in all that you do. All men will worship you. Sing, I will worship, and I will worship you. He will pray for our offering. Let's pray together. Okay, uh, let us pray. 
Uh, dear God, thank you for giving us this wonderful day to praise and worship you. Even though we are worshiping from home, uh, let us pay attention to God's word and let us give 100% to the worship. Uh, let us continue to worship at home. Let us continue to pray at home. Let us continue to praise you at home. We especially pray for the uh, COVID-19. There are so many people who are suffering. Uh, we pray that the vaccine to come out quickly. So uh, we all come to church, uh, come out together and worship and praise you together. We are looking forward to that day. Uh, let us do not forget that everything that we have, they all comes from you. Let us be thankful. Let us be joyful and let us count our blessings. Please use our offering to glorify your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Kingdom Kids. And so uh, I want to ask us a question. And I know our second and third graders already know this question, but I wanted to ask our first graders too. Do you guys know what time is it? Do you guys know? It's Bible time, right? It's Bible time. And so I want us to get, gather up all of our energy because we're going to say in a loud voice on the count of three that it's Bible time. So Kingdom Kids, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Okay, let's say it all together on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. It's Bible time. Yay! What time is it? It's Bible time. Yes. God's word, it is alive, it is true, it's real. It's how God speaks to you, to me, and to every single one of us. And so it is my prayer as your pastor that your eyes would be open to seeing and reading God's powerful word, that your ears would be open to hearing God's word, and that your hearts and your minds would be open to receiving God's word, and knowing God's word and to believing in God's powerful word today. And so if you guys have your Bibles out with you and something to write with, I want to tell us today's sermon title. And that is, where are you looking? Question mark, right? Where are you guys looking? Are you guys looking straight ahead? What are you guys looking at? And so I want us to write that down. And then I wanted to ask a question, two questions actually. And the first question I wanted to ask you, Kingdom Kids, it is, do you play any sports? If so, what kind of sports do you guys play, right? You know, I could think of some sports on the top of my head like baseball, basketball, riding your bike. I, I like to do that sometimes. Uh, also, uh, tennis. I like playing tennis, Pastor Grace likes playing tennis, or football, or even soccer, right? Kingdom Kids, if you're with, you know, your parents or your family, why don't you share, like, oh, what sports do you enjoy doing, and what sports do you like watching, right? And I asked this, right, because there is one sport that I thought of, which was running, right? Have you guys ever been in a race or have you ever watched a race, right, where you're with other people and you have somewhere to go to and there is at the end of the race, where what is there? There is a finish line, right? And so as runners, it's your goal to look ahead, look forward and to look at what? To look at that finish line right here, right? That's the goal of every runner is to finish that race and to pass that finish line. And I ask this question, Kingdom Kids, right? Because we're going to be learning about a story today about Jesus and, and one of his disciples named Peter. And we'll see where Peter was looking at and who was he looking at. And so I want us to take out our Bibles and turn and open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 36. And Kingdom Kids, it's so important that we have our Bibles with us and open it up, especially for our first graders. It might be, uh, you know, one of your first times opening it up. And it's, we're always going to have our Bibles open up to look and to read because we need to read with our eyes and see what we're reading, right? And so let's turn and open up um, 
to Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 36. And so I'll give you some time. And while I give you some time, I wanted to ask, where do you think Kingdom Kids Matthew is in? Is it in the Old Testament or in the New Testament? See, the Bible, it is made up of 66 books in the Bible, right? There is 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. And when you count that all together, it is 66 books. And so you're going to find Matthew in the New Testament. And so I'll give you a little bit more time to find that and open up your Bible. And then we're going to all read it together on the count of three. And we're always going to, for our first graders, we're always going to have our Bibles uh, with us, and we're always going to open it up so that we could read with our eyes because it's so important to read and to know God's Word. All right? And so let's read this all on the count of three together. Uh, one, two, three. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Verse 25, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Verse 28 it says, Lord, if it's you, Peter, said, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then, Jesus, then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Verse 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. Amen. And so, Kingdom Kids, what did we just read right now, right? I want us to stop and think, right? Stop and think. What did we just read? And we know, and what we learned last Sunday is that, do you guys, Kingdom Kids, remember what miracle Jesus performed? What we learned about last Sunday? He fed, how many people? He fed more than 5,000 men, right? So people he probably fed 10 to 20,000 people, including the women and children. And the Bible tells us when we look in the Bible and when we read the Bible, the Bible tells us that after he fed the more than 5,000 people, that he made his disciples, right? He fed them. He made his disciples do what? What did Jesus tell his disciples to do? So let's look at our Bible and look at verse 22. What does verse 22 say? Verse 22, can you guys find it? Yes, it says that Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. So they got into their boats and they went on the lake, right? But Kingdom Kids, I wanted to ask, why then did Jesus he tell his disciples to go on the boat? What does verse 23 tell us? So look at your Bibles and, and read. What does verse 23 say? It says that he made his disciples go on the boat so because he wanted to go up to the mountainside by himself to pray. And so Kingdom Kids, who did Jesus pray to? He prayed to God the Father, right? And Kingdom Kids, what is prayer? Prayer, it is talking with God. And so for Jesus, he knew how important it was for him to spend time with God the Father and to talk with him in prayer. And so he made his disciples go on the boat so that he could be alone and pray with God the Father. And so 
I wanted to ask us, because Kingdom Kids, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. And so what I want you to do is I want you to answer them, whether you're by yourself or with your family. Uh, so the next question I wanted to ask is, what happened then to the boat and the disciples that were in the boat? What does the Bible tell us as we have read? The Bible tells us, right, that as they were in the boat, the disciples were in the boat, there was wind and the waves were coming and there was a storm kind of, right? And it was shaking the boat and it was getting hard for the disciples to row their boat and the waters were crashing into them and they spent hours like this in the boat. But remember, where was Jesus? Jesus was in the mountainside praying to God the Father. And so the Bible tells us, right, that early in the morning, right, in verses 25, what did Jesus do? In verses 25, let's read the Bible. It says, shortly before dawn, which was the early morning, between like 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., Jesus, he went out to them walking on the lake, right? He was walking on the lake. Jesus didn't have a boat to go to the disciples, but instead he was walking on the waters, right? And Jesus, he came to his disciples. But kingdom kids, I want us to stop and think, right? And what I wanted to ask was, how was Jesus able to walk on the water, right? Nobody can walk on the water, but how was Jesus able to do that? I wanted to ask then, who is Jesus, right? Is he just any normal person? No, right? Jesus is who? Jesus is? Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God. He is Lord. He is Messiah. And because Jesus is the Son of God and is God, he has the power to walk on water. And so we see that he comes to his disciples. But I wanted to ask Kingdom Kids, how did the disciples respond to Jesus? Well, the Bible, what does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us that they didn't recognize and realize that it was Jesus. They saw somebody coming to them, walking on the waters, and they didn't know it was Jesus. And so the Bible tells us that they were frightened, meaning they were super scared because they thought it was a ghost, right? They never saw anybody walking on water. But we know who it is, right? The Bible tells us that it was Jesus who was walking on the waters. And because he knew his disciples were scared, how did Jesus respond? What does it tell us in verse 27? Jesus says what? Let's look at our Bibles. He says, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And so he was telling them, hey, it's me, it's Jesus. You don't have to be scared. It's me, I've come to you, right? And Kingdom Kids, I want us to stop and think and, and ask, what did Peter say to Jesus, right? Peter, one of his disciples, what does verse 28 tell us? Peter says something really strange, right? When we look in our Bibles, we read that he asked Jesus to command him to come out of the boat and come to him, meaning he wanted Jesus to say, uh, Peter, come out of the water and, and come walk towards me on the water. And that was kind of strange to ask, right? Why would Peter ask Jesus for something like this? So strange, like, hey, Jesus, can you tell me to come out of the water, out of the boat and onto the water to walk on the water? And, you know, Peter, he knew that Jesus wasn't just any normal person, but he knew that Jesus was special, right? He knew, Peter knew that Jesus, he had the power to calm the waves and the storms and the seas like we learned a few weeks ago. And we, we know that Peter, he also knew that Jesus had the power to feed more than 5,000 people and that Jesus has the power to heal, right? To heal the sick, to heal the blind. And so because Peter knew that Jesus had power and that he is the Lord of all things, Lord of all creation, he said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. 
And so I wanted to ask us kingdom kids, why did Peter want to walk on the water? And the Bible doesn't tell us why uh, Peter wanted to walk on the water. Our guess could be because he wanted to be with Jesus. That it was better, you know, that more than staying on the shaky boat, that he wanted to just be with Jesus. And so he said, Jesus, tell me to come out of the boat and onto the water to be with you. And so how does Jesus respond to Peter's uh, weird request and question, right? Jesus, the Bible tells us that Jesus says, come. And so we read and we know that Peter, he gets out of the boat and he starts walking on water to Jesus. And so as he's walking, right, how was, I wanted to ask, how was Peter able to walk on water? Peter is just a disciple, right? Peter, he was able to walk on water because it was Jesus who gave him the power to do so. It was because of Jesus' word by saying, come out into the water, that Peter, he had the faith to obey Jesus, and he got able, he got out of the boat, and he was walking to him. So it wasn't by Peter's own strength or his own power, but it was because of Jesus that Peter was able to walk on the water. And so, Kingdom Kids, I wanted to ask us then is that where was Peter looking at, right? Who was Peter looking at? He was looking at Jesus, that his focus, that his eyes, he was looking to Jesus. And because he was looking at Jesus, he was able to walk, right, on the waters. And so this is actually the first point that I want us to remember. So if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. And it is focus on Jesus because he is trustworthy. Let's say that together on the count of three. One, two, three. Focus on Jesus because he is trustworthy. Because Jesus is trustworthy and because Peter, his focus was on Jesus, right, he was able to walk on water because he trusted in who Jesus is, that Jesus, he is the son of God, that he is the Lord of all creation, Lord of all. And because his focus was on him, right? And so we see that Peter was walking on the waters and he was walking to Jesus, but dun, 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 something happened. Peter, he started to sink and he started to fall down into the waters. And he was doing that because the Bible tells us that his focus was on where? Where was Peter looking at? Was he looking at Jesus? No. He started to look at the waves and the waters and the winds. And it made him get scared. And he got distracted because he was looking at other things and focusing on other things instead of focusing on Jesus. And when he got distracted and he lost sight of Jesus, he started to sink into the waters. And then he cried out for help, right? Peter, he was sinking and he cried out to Jesus and he said, Lord, save me. Save me is what Peter said and cried out to Jesus. And we see that when Peter, he started to sink into the waters, his focus, it was on Jesus again. And he cried out to Jesus because he knew that only Jesus could save him. And so Kingdom Kids, how did Jesus respond then, right? How did Jesus respond to Peter? Let's look at verse 31. Do you think Peter, do you think Jesus just like stood there and said, no, you know, you lost your focus in me, Peter, and you stopped looking at me. I'm just going to let you sink there in the water. Do you think that's how Jesus responded? No, no way, right? Jesus, the Bible tells us, right, in verse 31, that Jesus immediately, immediately saved him and grabbed him, right, and brought him to safety in, in his arms, right? And Jesus, he said to Peter, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And I don't think Jesus said this because he was like angry, but it's because, you know, he wanted Peter to have faith in him, just like he had faith when he first said to Jesus, if that's you, Lord, let me come out so that I can come to you. And so we see that Jesus, he brings Peter, 
safely back into the boat. And so the second point then I want to share with you guys is that only Jesus can save us when we look to him in faith. Let's say that all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Only Jesus can save us when we look to him in faith. And Kingdom Kids, I wanted to ask you, how else does Jesus save us? How else does Jesus save you and me? Can you think of a way he saves us? He saves us by dying on the cross for whose sins? For our sins. And so that's another way that Jesus, he saves us, by taking all of our sins and nailing it to the cross. And so Kingdom Kids, how then does, do the disciples respond to Jesus? That's what I wanted to ask us, right? How did the uh, disciples respond to Jesus, those who were on the boat? What does verse 33 tell us? Is that when Jesus brought Peter into the boat, you know, the, the wind and the waves, they calmed down. And in verse 33, it says, let's read it all together on the count of three. One, two, three, it says, Then those uh, who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. That was the response of the disciples, is that they looked at Jesus, and they said, Truly, Jesus, you are the Son of God. You are who you say you are. And so point number three, and I want us to write this down, is that we must respond to Jesus in worship. Let's say that all together on the count of three. One, two, three. We must respond to Jesus in worship. Right? Just as the disciples responded to Jesus, us too, kingdom kids, we should respond to Jesus in worship. And so I wanted to ask us then, what's the big deal? What's so important about this Bible story that we learned? And the first question is, how are we like Peter in this story? Kingdom kids, can you think of how you and I were like Peter in the story? And you might think, oh, Pastor Grace, I'm not like Peter at all. But Kingdom kids, we are kind of a lot like Peter. How so? It's because sometimes we're a lot like Peter because we too, uh, we have faith in Jesus, right? But sometimes we get distracted and we want to go to Jesus, but then we get uh, scared. We start looking at the things around us instead of looking to Jesus. And we get scared of things like COVID-19 or we start, you know, or starting a new school year or starting, you know, meeting new friends or doing something new or challenging. We start getting scared of those things in life and we start losing our focus our attention on Jesus and we start getting distracted by everything else and we forget about the most important person ever and that's Jesus. And that's when we start to like lose trust and when we do, we kind of end up like uh, Peter who starts to sink into the waters when he gets distracted and is not looking and thinking and focusing on Jesus. And so the next question that I wanted to ask us is that when we get distracted, and are scared, what should we do? How should we respond, right? Just like Peter, we should cry out to Jesus and ask Jesus for help. And he will help us, kingdom kids, because he loves us, because he cares for us. And Jesus, he comes to us, right? Just as he comes to save us by dying on the cross for our sins, he will come to help us whenever we cry out to him and when we're scared. And so just ask Jesus for help. And so application, right? How then can we apply God's word to our lives? What does this story teach us about who God is and what the gospel is? And what does the story teach us about ourselves? And some applications that I could think of is, one is we can pray. We can pray that, you know, that we would not get distracted or scared by the things of this world, but that we would focus on Jesus, that we would look to Jesus. And you're probably wondering, Pastor Grace, we can't, how can we look to Jesus? We can't really see him, right? 
Well, we can look to Jesus and focus on Jesus when we think about Jesus and who he is and trust in who he is, that he is who he says he is, that he is the son of God, that he is God. And the second application that I can think of is that we can worship God, right? We can worship Jesus by spending time with him. And can you think of ways, Kingdom Kids, that you can spend time with Jesus? We can spend time with Jesus and worship Jesus by praying, by reading the Bible, by praising and singing to Jesus. And so, Kingdom Kids, I just wanted to go over again those three important points to remember. And the first point is to focus on Jesus because he is trustworthy. And number two is only Jesus can save us when we look to him in faith. And the last point, it is we must respond to Jesus in worship. It's not enough just to know Jesus, to know that he is the son of God, to know that he is who he says he is. But we must, you and I, we must respond in worship to him because he is worthy and trustworthy of our worship. And so Kingdom Kids, I want us to pray together. And so let's close our eyes, put our hands together, and I'll close this in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, so much today for your word, your word which is true, your word which is life and light to us. Thank you that we get to learn about who Jesus is, that Jesus, he is who he says he is, that he is the son of God. Help us, Lord, to focus on Jesus, to think about Jesus, to remember Jesus, that when life uh, gets Life worries come and we get scared and distracted. Help us to remember Jesus and to focus on him again. And when we get scared, help us to cry out to Jesus and to trust and know that he will save us. And Lord, we pray, God, that as your children, as your sons and, dis- and daughters, and as your disciples, that we would respond in worship and praise and love uh, for Jesus. We thank you. Uh, We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, Kingdom Kids, we are going to go into the Lord's Prayer together. And so uh, for those who are comfortable saying it in Korean, you can uh, say it in Korean. For those who want to say it in English, uh, let's say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. All right, Kingdom Kids, we are going to go into a family activity time. And so we have two family activities. The first one, it is called sink or float, sink or float, right? And so what you need is just like a bucket of water and a paper and pen. And what you're going to do is you're going to write a list of things around your house and see if those items will sink or float. And so some examples I have is like a pen or foil. What else do I have? A balloon that you blow up or coins. And so you're going to put it into the bucket of water and see and guess if that sinks or floats. And so our second activity, it is called cross the lake. What is it called? Cross the lake. And so what you need is just two sheets of paper. And so you're going to, from one end of your home to the other, you're just going to lay the sheet of paper on the floor, like one at a time, and you have to step on it, right? And you're going to lay another down, you're going to step on it, and you're going to get the old paper and then step and see who could do it the fastest. You could time yourself and who could do it the fastest from one end of the room to the other. And so I hope uh, you kingdom family uh, enjoy these family activities. And so now we are going to go into a benediction, which is a prayer of blessing by Pastor Jeremy. And so let's hold our hands open wide and close our eyes and receive this prayer of blessing. Let's pray. 
dear God, and thank you so much for calling us today and worship you and letting us listen to you. And let us remember the words we heard today and let those words plant in our hearts and take root and keep our stems and bear many fruits. So please help us grow as a person and you want it. We love you. We worship you. We follow you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Father God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore. Amen.